Welcome to this tutorial on Next Generation Sequencing. We'll be reviewing the handling of magnetic beads in NGS library preparation. Bead cleanups purify nucleic acids and remove any unwanted contaminants such as salts, primer dimers and DNTPs. Nope, that's too much manual work. Let's get automated here on an EP motion. Bead cleanups can be tricky if handled manually, so we'll get help from a robot. We'll be taking a closer look at what happens in each well of the sample plate in this process. The first step is the binding of the beads to the sample. The volumetric ratio of beads to DNA sample will influence the length of the DNA fragment recovered. Let's play around with that ratio. If we start at a 0.5x ratio of beads to DNA, the larger fragments are selected for, while smaller fragments will be removed during later wash steps. Here we lose a lot of the total fragments. When moving to a 0.8x ratio of beads to DNA, there is an increase in the number of smaller fragments selected for. This can also include unwanted tiny fragments such as primer dimers. The ratio of 0.65x gives a tighter size distribution, selecting fragment sizes needed for sequencing. Let's move on to the next step. After the incubation of beads and sample, the cleanup process begins. The sample plate goes onto a magnet where the DNA bound to the beads is separated from unwanted contaminants. Let's take a closer look. If the sample vessel does not have a good fit with a magnetic plate, some of the sample can be lost. For all of the sample to be recovered, it is important to have an optimized fit. The supernatant can then be removed without disturbing the magnetic beads. With the sample plate still on the magnet, the next step is the ethanol wash. First, the supernatant is removed. The ethanol is added to the pelleted sample and removed. The pellet will then have to dry to remove any remaining ethanol. Alright, we already managed to get pretty far. Well, the EP motion did the job. Let's move on to the drying step. Okay, now we take a closer look at this step. It is not as trivial as it might sound. We'll look at three different scenarios. The left pellet is air-dried for a rather short time. The pellet in the center is air-dried for a couple of minutes. The right pellet is dried on a heat block, also for a couple of minutes. All right, let's resuspend and elute our first pellet. After resuspension, there is still a remaining ethanol that could inhibit enzymatic reactions downstream in the NGS workflow. The pellet was too wet. Maybe we can get better results if we assist the drying process with heat. Oh no, this pellet has been overdried. The beads are brittle and it's hard to remove the DNA. This pellet was too dry. As you can see here, the pellet has been patiently air dried and the DNA detaches easily during resuspension and elution. In the final step, the DNA is eluded from the beads. The magnetic beads are then pelleted again. The purified DNA sample is transferred to a new well and is ready for the next steps. We have summarized the most important points in this infographic to help you get the best results in your NGS bead cleanups. Thanks for watching this video. The infographic shown is part of Eppendorf's series of Stay Informed infographics, available for download at eppendorf.com slash stayinformed.